Hello, y'all. So today I'm going to talk about different properties affected by IMFs. So remember, IMFs stands for intermolecular forces. Uh, these are the forces that hold molecules together. For example, a bunch of water molecules. Let me just go ahead and. So if we have a bunch of water molecules, the little forces holding these together are actually our intermolecular forces. And those are that, and they exist based on partial charges, uh, specifically in this one, but there's a couple different kinds. We have three kinds. We have at the strongest, hydrogen, bonding, and that exists when we have a hydrogen bonded to a fluorine, a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, or a hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen. So those will all create hydrogen bonding. Moving down our list towards our weakest, we are going to have dipole, dipole. Uh, bonding. So this happens anytime we have polar molecules. Remember from a previous video, polar means having a dipole moment. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that a little bit, not too much. And then last, at the bottom of the rung, the weakest intermolecular forces are gonna be LDFs or London dispersion forces. And this just happens in anything with electrons. And one more thing to note is the more electrons, the more force. So if something has more electrons, it can have a greater London dispersion force. Anyways, so we're going to need to think about the strongest to the weakest and the amount of electrons, et cetera, as we move on to different properties that are affected by IMFs. Uh, just a quick side note, hydrogen bonding is what's happening here because we have hydrogens bonded to an oxygen. So that's all hydrogen bonding. So. We're going to go over four properties. The first one is going to be state of matter. Second one is going to be boiling point. Third one is going to be melting slash freezing point. And the fourth one is going to be viscosity. We'll talk about each of these. So with that said, let's begin with one, states of matter. So we're going to be talking about the three main states. We have solid, liquid, and gas. And when we look at a solid, versus a liquid, versus a gas, we want to think about the particles. In a solid, the particles are ordered, they're rigid, they're moving, but just kind of slightly. They're kind of vibrating in place. That's our solid. Our liquids, on the other hand, the particles kind of move freely around each other. They're never not touching each other, but they move freely around each other. Uh, that's because they're not holding on to each other as hard. 
Um, and last, we have gas. Oh, I'll change up the color. We have gases. Gases, the particles are kind of shooting off in all directions, going every which way. They're not touching each other. So gases, particles are on their own, moving everywhere. So what keeps a solid tight together is the particles are holding to each other really strong. Particles hold to one another strongly. So that's going to be our solid. And the liquids, the reason they can move and slide around each other, so these particles just kind of swoop and slide around each other. And the reason they can do that is because while they're still holding on to each other, it's much freer. It's a much looser grasp. Particles hold each other loosely. Loosely. So that's a liquid. And in gas, the particles, particles don't even have the, uh, don't even have the strength of attraction to hold each other. Let me change that. So the particles don't even have the strength of attraction to hold each other. And with these concepts in mind, if we look back at our forces, forces that hold each other strongly are going to be what represents solids, because solids of particles hold each other strongly. Forces that hold each other weakly like London dispersion forces are going to hold each other much more weakly and therefore may not even be able to hold each other at all, like in a gas. And so if we look at a real world example, like for example, our atmosphere, the only, the particle that makes up 78% is nitrogen, N2. And that particle looks like this. It's an N triple bonded to an N which this is non-polar. And because it's non-polar, there is going to be no dipole, dipole. And because we don't have no hydrogens, there is going to be no H bonds. So the only one left is London dispersion forces. So the only force is this field is London dispersion. And you know that because, well, there's, an there's electrons. We see them here, we see them in the bonds, and they're inside the atoms as well in the inner orbitals. So we do have London dispersion forces, but those are the weakest. London dispersion forces are the weakest forces there are. So in our atmosphere, these nitrogen particles cannot hold on to other neighboring nitrogen particles. So if we have another one right here, they have a very weak attraction. So this is a weak LDF. They have a very weak London dispersion force, which means they can't hold on to each other and they fly around. That's why our atmosphere is gases. The particles physically don't have the force to hold on to each other and beat any other state. All right, so that's number one. So we're going to move on to number two, boiling point. To bring a liquid to a gas at a certain temperature, we have to, we have to take the particles that are touching each other but moving around and we have to separate them. 
So to turn a liquid into gas, which is what boiling is, it's the temperature at which something boils, we need, I'm going to kind of divide this, we need to break the bonds between the molecules. Specifically, these bonds are made of our intermolecular forces. So we need to literally put enough energy in. So we put in, we put in energy in the form of heat. And we put in energy in the form of heat enough to break those bonds. So basically, if we have stronger bonds, we need more heat. Stronger bonds, we need more heat. Therefore, if we were to graph this, the boiling point measured in temperature increases as the strength of IMF increases. So when we have stronger bonds, so more in this direction, we need more heat. So stronger bonds means more heat. On the other hand, if we have weaker bonds, we need less heat. So if we drew a line, we see that as the strength of the IMF increases, the boiling point increases. A quick example of this is if we look at water, which is H2O versus isopropyl alcohol, which is CH3OH, or sorry, CH7OH. So this is isopropyl alcohol. We have one hydrogen bond, two hydrogen bonds. But here we only have one hydrogen bond. So water having more hydrogen bonds is going to have more IMFs. So when you look at the boiling point of water, water boils at about 100 degrees Celsius. Well, isopropyl alcohol boils at about 80 degrees Celsius. And so we can see that this is true. Stronger bonds, uh, higher boiling point. All right, so next one. Number three, melting slash freezing point. So we say melting slash freezing because those happen at the same temperature. If I take ice, it's going to turn into water at zero degrees Celsius. But if we take water and we turn it to ice, that's still going to happen at zero degrees Celsius. Whether we're melting or freezing, it still happens at the same temperature. It's just going from ice to water is adding energy. And going water to ice is removing energy. So that's just the main difference. Now, if we go to our idea of what melting and freezing is, so we're going to refer to this as the melting point, the point at which it melts. So we take our solid and we go to our liquid, solid and liquid. So we have our rigid solid here. They hold each other very strongly. And we have our loose liquid here. Hold each other stronger than gas, but pretty weakly. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to kind of break the strong bonds again. So we, we, oh, we need to loosen slash break some 
bonds, which once again, these are going to be our IMFs, our intermolecular forces that hold those bonds together. And so much like boiling point, if we're going to break a bond, uh, the stronger the bond, the more energy we need. So the stronger the bond, the more energy we need. And again, energy, we're kind of talking about heat. And so melting point and boiling point is the exact same trend, except one is going solid to liquid and the other is going liquid to gas. So if we look at our graph, and now we say melting point, again, we're measuring temperature. As we add, we're gonna need more heat to break a stronger IMF, strength of IMF. We have strong over here. So we need much more temperature to break that strong IMF, and much less temperature to break that weak IMF. And turns out we have the same curve. All right, so boiling point and melting point are pretty much the same. So last but not least, going on to the final one, viscosity. Viscosity is the resistance to flow. And what I mean is if we have some inclined plane, I'm actually going to copy this over here. And on one plane, we have, uh, I'm going to try and draw water pouring out. We have water. And on the other side, oh boy, let's see if I can do this. On the other side, we have honey. Actually, let's represent this. We're pouring out honey. And now I'm talking about honey, the thing that comes from bees and not the website tool. So water flows faster. Honey flows slower. So we would say because honey flows slower, this has a greater resistance to flowing. And you can see where this is gonna lead. Therefore, this is high viscosity. So honey is something with a high viscosity, while water, on the other hand, has a pretty low viscosity. All right. So if it's resistance to slow, resistance to move apart from itself, because what's happening in water is it's spreading out. It's spreading out which means it's okay, the bonds feel okay moving away from each other. Particles are moving away from each other. And because the particles are moving away from each other, that means their bonds are weaker. Because if you are hugging your friend really tightly. It's going to be hard to pull you two away. But if it's kind of an acquaintance you don't really care about and you're just kind of shaking hands, maybe it's pretty easy to pull you away. So the stronger the bond, so the stronger the bond, the greater the viscosity. And therefore, for our final graph, I'll just see if I can place it right here. Viscosity. And at the top, we have high, low. 
and we have strength of IMF, we have strong and weak. A strong IMF is going to hold on to each other really strongly. It's going to be hard to spread out. But a weak IMF is going to be easy to spread out. So our last chart looks exactly the same as the others. Strong IMF, high viscosity. Weak IMF, low viscosity. So with that said, I hope you learned a lot and have a great day.